In natural settings, stormwater slowly soaks into the ground surface or flows overland into nearby streams. In developed areas, natural surfaces are often replaced with impervious or hard surfaces, such as streets, sidewalks, parking lots, homes, or other similar structures. These hard surfaces prevent water from infiltrating into the ground and dramatically increase the amount of stormwater runoff. If not properly controlled, stormwater can overwhelm streams and embankments and could cause major flooding, soil erosion, and water pollution. Stormwater ponds are designed to capture, store, and slowly release runoff from those hard surfaces before it enters our local streams to help prevent downstream flooding. In addition to controlling water quantity, the ponds also help improve water quality. Stormwater ponds reduce pollution by capturing and filtering pollutants such as sediments, excess nitrogen, phosphorus, animal waste, and chemicals. A growing awareness of just how vulnerable waterways have become has resulted in legislation that requires municipalities to obtain permits before discharging stormwater runoff. In accordance with federal regulations, Cranberry Township has a permit with the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection to maintain water quality through our MS4 program, which stands for the Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. This requires private pond inspections and maintenance by property owners. This video will provide guidance and information on the inspection of dry ponds or detention ponds, naturalized ponds, underground facilities, and wet ponds or retention ponds. Additional information including stormwater pond terminology and links to resources, pond inspection information, and the online inspection form may be found on our website. Hello, my name is Tim Schutzman. I'm the Water Works Coordinator for Cranberry Township, and with me today I have Jenna Sutton, who is the Engineering Department's uh, intern. Today we're here to talk to you about pond inspection to provide some guidance and some direction on items that should be looked at when you're performing your pond inspection. So today we're at North Boundary Park. We're gonna walk you through some, some inspection process that we perform when we're doing our pond inspections for the township. So the first thing to look at when inspecting your pond is its, is its accessibility. So for this North Boundary Pond, we have an accessible path, a paved path here, and you want at least one point of access for your pond, and that is for any maintenance purposes. So for example, um, if you want to cut down vegetation, we have like riding lawn mowers, you need to have a rigid path for accessibility so that it can get through. Also, um, when the time comes, you might need to dredge your pond, uh, you can get heavier machinery through. So here, we have a rigid path, and this makes the pond accessible. As Jenna was mentioned, it's important to make sure you have a clear path. From my experience, I've seen uh, cases where the access road uh, gets encroached upon by neighboring sheds, fences, or even tree growth. Trees grow up over time since uh, the, the access isn't used that often. This is a detention basin, also known as a dry pond. So the pond serves to handle the surge of water after a storm event and then within a 72 hour period this pond will drain down so you should not see standing water uh, within this pond. As part of the inspection you want to look at the embankment area. The embankment area is the area that divides the pond with the low-lying area beside it so this creates this embankment is basically a dam allowing that water to be stored in the pond area. So with that inspection, you want to walk and look the, uh, the embankment on the pond side and also the downstream side to make sure that there's no large trees, trees growing up within the embankment, that there's no soft spots or sinkholes, that the vegetation on this embankment side is stabilized that you have a full, pretty much a full set of vegetation holding the embankment. You also want to look for any type of burrowing, maybe some groundhogs or, or other critters that have burrowed into the embankment. If you see any sinkholes or anything forming on embankment that catch your attention, 
you really want to document that, take some pictures, and if it does raise concern, you may want to consult with an engineering firm to take a look at this a little further. Currently, we are in the middle of the growing season, so as you can see, this pond is fully vegetated. Uh, the bottom of the dry pond has cattails, and on the sides, uh, there is, it is covered in grass. We recommend that the best time to inspect your pond is between December and March, and that's because if there is a ton of vegetation, it is very difficult to look at all of the components of the pond to see, to, to look into great detail. With this particular outlet structure, it's elevated above the ground. So in this case here, like with many other ponds throughout Cranberry Township, you may need a ladder to be able to observe the outlet structure from the top to look in to, to perform that inspection. One of the most important items with your pond inspection is inspecting the outlet structure. That's the key portion of the pond that controls the release rate how much water is being released out of your pond at one time. Inspect this outlet structure basically on a quarterly basis or after a heavy rain event where we've received over two inches of rainfall. You want to make sure that no debris is blocking any of the uh, orifices or any of the openings here that drain the water out. And if you see, this is a particular dry pond, if you see this pond holding water over 72 hours after a storm event, then it raises concern that potentially your outlet structure here is plugged with debris or sediment, something restricting water from being released through this outlet structure. So we're gonna look at the stability of this outlet structure. Is the concrete, in this case like this, is it stable? Uh, is there any spalling? Is there any rebar exposed that, you know, if it, if you can address this early on in the process, it can cause, save you a lot of money and aggravation of having to bring equipment in here to replace this by just performing patch jobs on it. Uh, so this is an important part of your inspection too, is that you want to you know, avoid any large projects that if they can just a little bit of maintenance uh, with these structures can be done. On top of the outlet structure, I'm able to look into the outlet structure and I'm noticing all the joints between the concrete are sealed. There's no separation with it. Uh, the top of it here, in the case like with this particular pond, this is kind of the spillway um, that whenever the rain events gets high, it's able to get in the top and drain out so it does, the water doesn't build up too high. Uh, everything's stable here. And now I'm going to uh, observe on the other side of the outlet structure where the opening is that allows the release of water to enter into the pond. We want to visually inspect around the perimeter of this outlet structure to make sure that there's no cracking, spalling, any rebar exposure, and make sure there's no garbage or other debris obstructing the flow into it there is um, a little sliver gate here in the metal, metal pieces right here that really control how much water can actually be discharged into it. A little film there is just basically the, the grass and the other clippings breaking down over time and uh, causing that film. But it's natural, uh, it's not a cause for concern. The outer structure is stable and safe and uh, doesn't create a hazard or anything for any children that may happen to be playing within this area. So I'm pleased to say that you know, this structure is in very good condition. Also look at the outlet structures that are discharging into the basin. Want to check to see how much sediment is being discharged through that pipe. But in some cases you may see coming off of a yard drain or some other structure where dirt and sediment is getting discharged into the pond. Uh, you want to address that as soon as possible. Minimize the sediment that gets into the pond because ultimately that will impact the frequency of how often that pond needs dredged out of that sediment. If sometimes the outfall is a little harder to find. This is an example here for our dry detention basin. You know, as we go into it, it takes a little bit of effort here. Uh, the outfall is very difficult to access from all the vegetation and this is why uh, the best time to inspect is between the months of December and March. Okay, looking at this outfall, you want to make sure that the end wall is stable 
and that the grouting is stable. You can see um, looking behind it that it is all intact. Um, looking at the pipe itself, you wanna make sure that the pipe is connected. You can see at the beginning, it does not appear as if it is connected, but with further inspection, looking between here, you can see that the grouting is very, um, is definitely connected to the pipe. Next, of course, take pictures, document. Um, so usually just stick your arm up the pipe with the camera and take a picture. As you can see with this pipe, the water is very clear and is trickling down uh, to these rocks here, also known as riprap. So the riprap acts as an energy dissipator to slow the water down to help prevent erosion as well. Um, with the pipe and the water, make sure that there, obviously there are no strange colors or smells uh, coming out from the outfall. This basin is uh, real similar to a dry basin, but it's, it's called a naturalized basin. The basin should retain water uh, no longer than 72 hours after a rain event. And you can see what's one thing nicer with the naturalized basin, there's a lot of trees and shrubs planted within this basin to promote evapotranspiration, which is uh, where the water absorbs through the roots and then gets evaporated through the leaves. So it's a little different maintenance on these basins here, uh, but it provides uh, shade areas for, uh, for the, some vegetation that can survive. And it also has a special type of soil composition, which allows for the water to infiltrate into the ground versus a dry basin where the ground, the bottom of the basins are usually sealed pretty hard. Uh, with these naturalized basins, there's a special soil mixture that really promotes um, the water getting into the soils and absorbing into the soils. Here's our emergency spillway. So as you can see, there is a visual dip in the embankment where it goes down to low-lying area. There's also a concrete strip right here. That's for stability. Um, the purpose of the emergency spillway is whenever this basin fills up with water, if it fills up too much from um, a high rain event, um, the water can leave the pond in one area and yeah, it, it'll, it will exit the pond. Looking at our outlet structure, the first thing to look at is um, are these or orifices here and the trash rack. So make sure that the trash rack is clear, that there are no obstructions, and here there is nothing here. Um, the purpose of having these holes here is to get water to leave the pond at a controlled rate and at a pretty slow rate. With naturalized basins, if there is still water present after 72 hours from a storm event, then there is a valve in here, just like the retention pond at the golf course, to empty the water. Inside, make sure, um, when you look in, make sure that there are um, no strange odors or colors and that there are no obstructions inside the structure itself. In our naturalized basin, there's discharges that come from the road and other impervious areas. And one of the things we're doing our inspection, we wanna make sure that the structure is stable and in good conditions and not requiring any maintenance. So we look around the structure to make sure uh, there's no spalling, no rebar exposed, and it's stable behind the back of the end wall. So we know that the grout around the pipe here is, is solid and that there's no uh, settling going on behind it. And then one important parts is we're looking at our basin. This here is the slab here with the discharge. We want to make sure on downstream of this that we have stable ground. In this case here we have a lot of rock here, a lot of riprap, which when the water gushes through this pipe, it's able to go through this riprap and take away the energy to so stop any type of erosion, especially with our naturalized pond that may impact our vegetation. So things look well in, at this basin here. And then what we do when we're looking at our, doing our inspections, we also want to look at pretty well at this pipe that's coming in here. So we see it's a plastic pipe uh, in this here and try to peek in, peek in the pipe to see what we can see. And uh, we're kind of limited on how far up the pipe we can see, if there's any separation, any issues. I'm not seeing a lot of sediment build up here. So it kind of tells me that most likely there's no uh, separation within a pipe. But one of the things that we also do is we'll use our camera here and we'll stick our camera off the pipe and take a picture. 
Um, with this picture, it allows us to capture, you know, with the flash, it, it captures a pretty good distance up the pipe that we can see if there is any separation, any problems, any obstructions within the pipe, any bowing of the pipe, anything to be concerned that we want to really document. We're here in Cranberry Township at Grand Park uh, Complex. And within the park here, we have some beautiful uh, soccer fields, uh, some football fields. And in order to construct these fields, we needed to do a parking lot. To meet our stormwater requirements, we had to do a little special items because uh, we were limited with space. We came up with an underground stormwater detention facilities. So we're gonna to talk today about how we go about inspecting these underground facilities. Our underground facilities are located within the parking lot. They're under the parking lot. So we have our storm sewer inlets that discharge into this underground system, which all ultimately all flow this way towards the stream. And they're controlled in this inlet right here. There's an outlet structure here that restricts the amount of water that can be released at one time. Holding that water back, only allowing so much water to release off the site as there was prior to construction of this complex. During our inspection, we're looking in this, the controlled outlet structure to see if, uh, if there's any obstructions within this outlet structure that's allowing water to build back up into the system. As I look in today, there's, there's no obstructions and I'm not observing any sediment. One thing's unique with these underground facilities is that you can't see above ground what's going on here. So we rely on our observation uh, at the outlet structure here to see if we're starting to see sediment build up here at the outlet structure, then we know we're at a point where we may have to jet out this underground facility and uh, remove some of the sediment. Since this is a relatively uh, new structure and there's very little sediment that we notice to get discharged into it, it should hold up for quite a long time. But still with that, you know, after a heavy storm events, we still wanna at least put our, whole, our eyes uh, in this outlet structure to make sure the trash rack, no debris is getting in there and sediment and is not built up and then it's not retaining water uh, after 72 hours after a storm event. An important thing during your inspections is to of course document and you can do that by taking pictures of your structures. So as you can see here, there is a metal trash rack. That's what the uh, cube shaped structure is. And just look at it and make sure that it's not completely obstructed with garbage or debris. And this one, it looks pretty good. Now we're here at Cranberry Highlands, a golf course, and we're going to talk about the inspection on wet ponds, also known as retention ponds. So the pond is retaining water uh, even 72 hours after a rain event, we'll still see significant amount of water and that's to support the aquatic life, the fish and other, uh, and other things that we have living within the pond. So once again, one of the important parts of our inspection is gonna be looking at the outlet structure to make sure the outlet structure is clear of any debris or any obstructions and allowing that overflow water to be able to drain out properly. You can see here, as we look at this outlet structure, the front back end here, there is a opening which allows water to flow into the structure and at the uh, normal pull elevation. Similar, there is an opening in the front. One of the big differences between a dry detention basin and a wet detention basin is with the outlet structure, the basin itself has a valve in here. Uh, this valve is to the bottom of the structure, which is also the bottom of the, of the retention pond. So if maintenance needs to be performed on this structure, then the valve can be opened up and the pond can be drained down for the necessary dredging or repairs when needs to be made in the, the pond. In this wet pond here, we have aerators in the pond, and these are agitators. They increase oxygen in the water, and this helps decrease algae and promotes aquatic life. So the life of fish, life of frogs, it keeps oxygen in the water, and it keeps the pond health um, at a very high level. Um, in addition, you can see the shorelines 
Um, our shorelines are pretty stable. Uh, not much erosion happening here. That's also because, well, we have a line with rocks and we also have a good amount of vegetation on the shoreline of the pond. As was similar with the detention basin that we talked about, the main thing when you're coming in to make sure you have access into your, the, your retention facility is you want to see that there's unobstructed access into the facility and in our case here, we do have a rigid bituminous surface that if we need to bring in large equipment for the maintenance of the facility, we're able to do that without much damage. Now we're gonna look at the outlet structure, which is uh, where the water is drained from that retention pond. You can see here the outlet structure looks pretty good. And we've got some large rocks uh, that serve as energy dissipator, allowing the the water that's discharged from this pipe to slow down and stop any type of erosion through this. You can see the, the pipe, one of the things we're looking at is to make sure the end wall here, the concrete end wall is stable. There's no undercutting underneath it. Uh, there's no cracks and as we observe from above, there's no settling above this. The pipe is well grouted um, and looking, observing up inside the pipe, you know, we see that it's pretty stable that we're not seeing any cracks or erosion or any type of separation of the pipe or breakdown of the pipe so it, it looks to be in good condition. Okay now that we've completed the stormwater inspections of the various facilities the next we're going to walk you through how to complete online the stormwater inspection reports that get submitted to Cranberry Township annually. Cranberry's Pond Inspection Form is easy to complete online. Visit cranberrytownship.org slash stormwater and click on the Pond Inspection button. The online form will guide you through the inspection process. Simply complete the form and submit. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it very helpful and somewhat interesting. Um, if you have any further questions, feel free to contact the engineering department at Cranberry.